I call it an education day. And right. this is a day where it's like, we're not finding the right home, more than likely. <laughs> I mean, like, it's happened that we have found the right home, but right. typically we're not finding it. We're looking at styles, we're looking at layouts, we're looking at functionality for people, right? And it, I think that helps it put in perspective on what's gonna be the best suit for them. Because a lot of times everybody under, like everybody likes the idea of downsizing, but they might not feel that that lifestyle is right for them at this point. So right. um, I find that education day, it goes along, it's fun as well. Hi, I'm Greg Bamford and welcome to the Bamford & Co podcast. I'm here again with my brother Ryan and today we are talking about right sizing. Um, right sizing uh, comes into effect when a lot of people are looking to move into uh, I guess that next transition in life uh, but a lot of people aren't familiar with, I guess, the, the word right sizing. And can you give a breakdown of why we use that word? For sure. Well, the main thing is that a lot of people, I think, would be familiar with the term downsizing. But the reason why we use the term right sizing is, is because a lot of people are actually adjusting. Uh, it's not just about the square footage. It's about the style of home and maybe the functionality of that's going to be best for them in the coming years. Right. So. You know, for example, we've, you know, we see a lot of people that are moving out of, say, 2,000, 2, 2,200 square foot two-story homes, but then moving into, say, a 1,200 square foot Waco bungalow that's fully developed and actually gives you 2,400 square, square feet of living space. So when we, turn, when we say downsizing, it's not always that case, right? It's more about adjusting to the lifestyle that they're living today and it's gonna be you know, with them for the next, you know, say five to 10 years or, or whatever that next step would be. Yeah, you're, you're totally right on that. I mean, for example, we could, I think the example that Ryan just used was actually our parents. So five years ago, they, they moved out of a property that we'd been in there forever. And uh, I mean, ever since, I guess, 1990. And it was a 2,100 square foot house. And they made that transition into a bungalow townhouse for, for, the, for the, long, the longevity for of sure. their probably yeah. life. Right? And also, it's a little bit of a transition in, you know, for them is it was also they needed a lot of work to be done to the property to bring it up to the current standards of what people that are looking for for that style of home right now. So it was the question is that if they moved off and, and bought, you know, the walkout bungalow or they did the renovations and then we're still in a house that doesn't really fit their needs. Right. I guess that comes day. into the next question, right? So it's like, why do people move? Right. And there's and we, we break it down into three. There's usually a lot of different reasons why people move. Uh, but one is, first of all, the upkeep to a property, right? As you mentioned, it's OK, the siding needs to be done. It needs new windows. You might need a new furnace, shingles. You're not going to invest all that money into a property when you're looking at selling it five years down the road because you're probably not going to get that money back. So that's one of the one of the big reasons. The other one, I think, is probably the biggest factor is mobility. So it's uh, a lot of times people are living in two stories. They're looking at maybe not moving around as, as uh, good as they possibly could before. And, and then it's also, I guess, the upkeep on the exterior of the property, mowing grass and so forth. So their mobility kind of makes them, uh, I guess, make a trans uh, transition in life. And then I think the last one that is happening earlier than what we'd seen, I mean, a decade ago, was lifestyle. So a lot of these people aren't living into their homes till their, their 80s and their 90s like they, they were in the past. They're now looking to make this transition maybe in like, I mean, in their late 50s, early 60s. They might be having a property at the lake and then moving into something smaller here so they don't have double the work and so forth. So that right sizing and these three factors plays a, a massive role in I guess us helping our clients and, and many other people that are going through this, right? So for sure. And it's, it takes some time to be able to find, you know, what that right property is for them, just because I've seen a lot of people that, you know, we say downsizing and, you know, they went from a two story to a condo. And then next thing you know, yeah. you know, that lifestyle that they're looking for and, you know, having a nice, big, beautiful yard and then being in a small condo isn't necessarily maybe the step for them. Right. right? So when it's different for everybody and it doesn't mean that they're going to walk, everybody's going to move from a two story to a walk out bungalow. That was just a great example. Right. But we do also see a lot of people that, you know, they have a tough time 
judging on where they want to be next and you know like you said lifestyle maybe it's the lake maybe they're going down south for a little bit and, right. and maybe they don't need a big place in saskatoon and they just want it to be able to be around their kids right so it depends on the client at the it, end of the day it, and at least what we've found with our clients is that we're helping them figure that out right it's helping them through the journey so a lot of times it's going looking at bungalow townhouses going looking at condos going looking at i mean now the bungalow townhouses are just as expensive as bungalows mm -hmm. so those bungalows have now become a very hot commodity especially in briarwood for example mm -hmm. just because they're a little bit newer they're more updated so now we now work with our clients to walk them through all these different properties to let them figure out maybe what the next step is uh, and, and sometimes it takes some time. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we've worked with clients for a couple of months and we've worked with clients for two to three years, right? To find them that, that right property and also to help them understand, I guess, the price points because that may, that's one of the hurdles that, that's out there, right? So It certainly is a, a large hurdle, is it to know where their property sits compared to the new properties that they're looking at, right? And, and a lot of the times, like we were saying, is that there's still upkeep to be done um, you know, on some of these older homes, or they think that it's great, but it's maybe not what the new consumer is looking for. Right. So you know, there's, it's about guidance. And then also, you know, when we go out and you're talking about taking about seeing different properties, I call it an education day. And right. this is a day where it's like, we're not finding the right home, more than likely. <laughs> I mean, like, it's happened that we have found the right home, but right. typically we're not finding it. We're looking at styles, we're looking at layouts, we're looking at functionality for people, right? And it, I think that helps it put in perspective on what's gonna be the best suit for them. Because a lot of times everybody under, like everybody likes the idea of downsizing, but they might not feel that that lifestyle is right for them at this point. So. Right. Um, I find that education day, it goes along. It's fun as well. Clients, you know, they, there's some pros and cons, but that's what we're there to do is right. that we're there to educate them about what they need to be thinking about on their next stage of their life. Well, that and also the neighborhood. So, I mean, a lot of these people have lived in the same neighborhood for 20 to 30 years and they don't even know what the other neighborhoods are like, right? So mm -hmm. not only are they trying to figure out do they want a condo, uh, a townhouse, uh, uh, a single uh, family bungalow? They're also looking at, okay, where are they? So, I mean, Wildwood's super popular. Heritage, there's lots there. Briarwood's now a huge area because most of the, a lot of the properties there are bungalows. Um, unfortunately, in the new neighborhoods, they're really, other than some townhouse developments, with the lot shrinking, there is no new bungalows going up right wow. so that makes it a little bit harder to get into a new home that way unless it's a, a massive expensive bungalow back in a park yeah well you're right and it's also a lot of the reason behind no bungalows are being built is because of the cost to develop yeah. them is that there's just is it with the land values the way they are and then also the cost of materials bungalows are the most expensive to build and that's why we don't see many of them being built anymore yeah no for sure a another thing that we're looking at right now is that these properties that people have been living in for a long period of time, they're selling this 22, 2300 square foot house and they're looking at to maximize their return. And back in the day it was, I'm gonna sell this house, I'm gonna buy something smaller, I'm going to take $200,000 out of this so that I have for an investment and the rest of it. And now we've seen the cost of those bungalows and the, and the townhouses increasing so much that sometimes they have to actually pay more than what the sale of their house is going to get them to move into this next transition. I mean, I do believe it's a great investment because it's supply and demand and everybody's looking for them, but the longer they wait, the more they'll go up. And those houses that are more dated, being the two stories, a lot of times they need major renovations, right? And so families that are going into them, if you're looking at our demographic, which is a lot of people that would be buying them just because of our age group, those people would be looking at it might cost uh, seventy thousand to two hundred fifty thousand dollars to properly renovate them and, and to bring it up to today's standards. So there's a cost there, right? So it's the, it's just an interesting area that a lot of people are moving through just because it, it is a lot of the baby boomers that are that are going through this and and young younger people as well too. For sure, I completely agree. I think that that's a great way to, you know, explain what's what right sizing is and, and how, you know, we can guide people through that process and not just, you know, not just talk about, but take them out to actually see the properties, give them a full example of what to expect in that next stage in their life. 
and to see if it's going to fit for them because mm. we've you know we've seen it work where people don't move into that they move into that condo and they don't like it right so yeah is that i think that that's that is our job to educate them and to understand about all the different scenarios that can ha that can come from this you're for yeah you're right on that. It's uh, another thing that we help our clients do as well too, is that sometimes people are looking at moving a year from now, two years, five years from now, and they're looking at what can they start doing now to then help them with that move and maybe where are they going. So this, this sometimes takes longer than what most people think. And when you've acquired things for 30 years and you've collected all your kids stuff, they usually don't want it back. And so it takes time to be able to sort through that so it, uh, it's a journey and uh, we help our clients with that. So with that being said, that kind of explains a large part of our, our market right now. And uh, it's interesting, once we've worked with families and we've helped their kids and so forth, um, I don't know if that's thunder or not, but it, they're helping with uh, their, their family and their kids. A lot of times we get referrals to then help out their parents for the next step, right? And so it has become a larger part of what we've been helping families with and so if you have any questions uh for the for the next steps within for your life and and where you might be able to transition to we'd love to help you uh give ryan or i a call uh and then we can kind of give you the roadmap of the way that we see this working best that creates the less stress so uh thanks a lot for joining us uh i guess if if your parents on social media you can probably share this video with them and uh thanks a lot for everything Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Greg.